Hello, Willowbrook family. Today's Daily Devo is Ruth chapter 4. As promised by Pastor Mark yesterday, today is about wedding bells. Now, if you've ever been part of a wedding, you know how much planning goes into it. It's quite a production. And everyone in the wedding party wants things to go perfectly. The last thing you want to happen is some distant crazy relative to show up and ruin everything. Now, in the case of Ruth and Boaz, before there's a wedding ceremony or anything like that, a certain business transaction had to take place. Chapter 3 left us at a dramatic point. Ruth and Boaz were obviously in love and wanted to get married, with Boaz exercising the right of the kinsman redeemer. Yet, there was a kinsman closer to Ruth, and he had priority. Would he claim the right of kinsman redeemer towards Ruth and keep her and Boaz from coming together? Mm. So here's the story. Boaz goes to the gate of the city. That's where all the business transactions were carried out. As Boaz was standing there, lo and behold, the closer relative to Ruth passes by. Boaz invites him to sit down and chat with him and the elders. Boaz tells him, Naomi, who has come back from the land of Moab, has to sell the piece of land which belonged to our brother Elimelech. When Boaz brought up the matter to the nearest kinsman, he brought it up as a matter regarding property, something any man would be interested in. You know, anyone would want to buy back a piece of property and keep it in the family. So basically, Boaz says to this man, if you will redeem it, redeem it. When Boaz puts it in the terms of purely a land transaction, there was no hesitation on the nearer kinsman's part. Of course, he said, I will redeem it. Certainly, Ruth and Naomi were watching and listening and how their hearts must have sunk when they heard that. What in the world was Boaz doing? But Boaz knew exactly what he was doing, and he had the situation all under control. Then Boaz said something like this, Now, of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow, that she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Well, suddenly, the closest relative became less interested. And you'll notice that this guy is never named because just in my opinion, he might have been kind of a jerk. Well, anyway, the guy changes his tune and says he cannot take the deal. His excuse is that it will ruin his inheritance, which means he probably had grown sons that had already received their inheritance of lands. You see, the problem of dividing that inheritance among future children he would have with Ruth was a whole lot more than he wanted to deal with. And no doubt the man was married and he knew it would be awkward at best to bring home Ruth as wife number two. So the man tells Boaz, you redeem my right of redemption for yourself, for I cannot redeem it. These were glorious words in the ears of Ruth and Naomi. The plan of Boaz had a surprise and an unexpected wisdom to it, and it worked. Now, in Deuteronomy 25, it describes the ceremony conducted when a kinsman declined his responsibility. The one declining removed a sandal. It was kind of like walking away from their responsibility. So finally, Boaz and Ruth were married, and Naomi was so happy. Now, I don't think they had wedding bells back then, but if they did, they were ringing. Boaz and Ruth had a son whose name was Obed, and who is the grandfather of King David. Now, before we leave this book, I want to look at the significance of Boaz. He was the redeemer, the only resolution for Ruth and Naomi. He takes the initiative in bringing about the act of redemption. He pays a price. He publicly claims his own. He provides a name and inheritance where there was only ruin before. 
He restores and sustains Naomi. Ruth and Naomi could not have done these things by themselves. They were entirely dependent on the covenant faithfulness and personal compassion of Boaz, their kinsman redeemer. Now, does all of this sound familiar? What God did for Ruth and Naomi through Boaz, he has accomplished for all who cast themselves upon his mercy in Christ. As believers, we see that God took the initiative. He sent his son as our redeemer. He paid a price on the cross. He publicly claims us as his own family, and he gives us a name and an inheritance when we were headed for ruin. It's just like the song says, there is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious lamb of God, Messiah, holy one, Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Church family, rejoice daily in your redemption and have a great day in the Lord, Willowbrook.